Chris Fern announced changes to Malta's quarantine laws. Love in Malta launches Planning Web, a new construction accountability platform. Halfar facility given license to produce medical cannabis. All this and more on Love in Daily. Good evening and welcome to Love and Daily. I'm Tim Diakono, joined today by Belle de Jong, who's making her debut on the show. You've probably read a lot of her great work on loveandmalta.com, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of her on Love and Daily as one of our hosts. And today we also have a very special guest, Luke Mitzi, winner of the recent Red Bull Dance Your Style competition, um, which means he's going to be traveling to South Africa to represent Malta. You, you can follow the interview after we discuss the events that happened today. Big story today, Chris Fenn, head, the Health Minister of Health, has announced changes to Malta's quarantine laws. So as of Friday, Maltese residents who travel from a so-called dark red country will not be obliged to quarantine inside a hotel. Instead, they can quarantine at home. This is, this, there has been major national outcry over this requirement, particularly after Daniel Omana, um, a Maltese Nigerian fitness influencer, revealed that this would have forced his or his young girl with, with Down, his young sister with Down syndrome to quarantine inside the hotel. There has been a lot of pressure building up over the recent days and the health minister has finally changed the laws that have been in place since June. He has also said that the, even the, that the dark red list is going to be updated in a, in in a few days time, he didn't give, give, give many details on it, but he did say that it means um, the health authorities are going to be looking at places where the so-called Mu variant is starting to spread. And it means that countries like Russia and India will no longer be considered dark red countries, which means that if you have a vaccine certificate, you will be able, a recognized vaccine certificate, you will be able to travel to Malta without having to quarantine at all, not in a hotel, and not in a home. So, yes, uh, good news for many people, for many people traveling to Malta. It's a huge pain, for me, a huge financial pain for people to have to be forced to pay 1,400 euro to pay, you know, to, 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 to spend quarantine inside the, inside the hotel instead of at home where you can easily spend and there's, there's no logical reason for forcing people to stay inside the hotel. And uh, it, people have been complaining about this for quite a while. It's been, um, you know, occasionally there have been some reports in the media, people speaking out on social media, but it really came to a head in, um, in, 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 the, past, in the past week or so, in the past, in the past few days. And uh, the authorities have listened, they have bowed to pressure, and as of Friday, the rules are going to change. Bill, did you follow the, the press conference I today? definitely did. And another thing Chris Fern announced today is that Canadian vaccine certificates will finally be accepted by the Maltese authorities. That is good news for Canadians and especially Maltese Canadians who have been waiting for ages to go to Malta and see their family, their loved ones and their childhood friends. After a few stories that Love in Malta broke of Canadians reaching out to their family in Malta and reaching out to the authorities asking when their vaccination certificates would finally be recognized, this law now means that vaccinated Canadians can come to Malta without having to quarantine. Second of all, the planning web is being launched by Love in Malta. The planning web is a construction accountability platform which will be unraveling the ins and outs of Malta's construction industry. It will be a transparent and interactive open platform where you can navigate Malta's planning permits. It has an interactive map where you can see all planning cases in Malta right now. And in fact, I even went on the map and looked at my own streets where I could see a case happening as we speak. Yeah. There is also a forum to, to, file report, um, to file reports of illegalities that you're seeing, and it will constantly be updated by updated data and articles. Yes, yeah, so it obviously planning and development are always, always been huge issues in, issues in Malta. The problem is that the planning authority's website isn't the, the most user-friendly websites of all. It's, while architects can easily navigate across it 
um, with, at ease. The general public often finds it very difficult to, to find uh, a case number, to find who is planning what, like you said, in the street next to you. And what that means is they find it harder to appeal these, these decisions uh, or these applications. And so even though it is their right to appeal and perhaps they can stop a development, the, the mere fact that they don't know how to do it because the website is so tough to navigate around means that certain developments are going ahead when they should not be going ahead. So this, the point of this website is to empower people to, 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 to take control over their own country or to, make, or to, or to, to be the change and to really push uh, the authorities when they feel there's an injustice and in terms of construction planning. And I'm sure there's going to be quite a few. So visit loveandwater.com for all the latest details on, the, on this new initiative, the planning web. A Hal Far facility has been given a license to produce medical cannabis in Malta. So although you know people, regular people in Malta are, uh, are still being arrested and sent to and sent to court over the, for, for being found with with a, a little bit a little bit of cannabis, uh, a, a Canadian company called Materia has been given a license to produce the the exact same cannabis in Malta. They're going to be importing it from. Um, from, from overseas, producing it over here and then exporting it to other countries. And uh, it's, it's estimated to have an annual capacity of 6,000 kilograms. So it's going to be producing 6,000 kilograms of cannabis. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, it's been, it's been welcomed by the, by the government, by Malta Enterprise. It's going to boost the economy, it's going to create jobs, it's going to help the, the, the nation's GDP. Obviously, the big question that on, every, on many people's lips is that, okay, if this company is allowed to produce so much cannabis to, to gain a profit for himself, why, sh why is it wrong then for, for, any other, for any other person to just, um, to, why, why can't they be allowed to produce, to, to buy the cannabis for themselves to be used in Malta? As yeah. Tim said, that it does raise the question even is if it isn't slightly controversial or even hypocritical of the authorities to allow such a thing to happen. Me, coming from the Netherlands, I know quite a bit about rolling a joint. And I would say that if, if a country allows a company to work with 6,000 kilograms of weed, it might want to revisit its current cannabis laws. On another topic, the Grand Hotel Verdala in Rabat is being demolished. It is the end of an era for the Rabat skyline, as the I iconic hotel was dom dominating the skyline for centuries, for decades, sorry. Um, it has been abandoned since 1997, and it is finally being demolished, um, and it will be replaced by a luxury hotel, an eight-story luxury hotel consisting of three different blocks. Yes, so I, I, if you go on the, on the planning web, you'll probably be able to find more details about, about this and other developments. So yeah, another, another landmark in, in Malta being uh, destroyed for the sake of, of luxury apartments. Uh, quite a shame, but this is the state that we're, that we're unfortunately living in at the moment. And may I remind you again, the planning web New Love and Malta's new initiative to monitor precisely these kinds of initiatives and developments before they actually end up happening, before you see these photos on your screen of places you loved and grew up next to being torn down and replaced by um, ugly uh, blocks, of, blocks of apartments. And finally, uh, a petition has been filed in Parliament demanding the removal of all the sort of sun beds and deck chairs that have been occupying Comino's famous Blue Lagoon over the summer. So many of you have probably seen uh, these viral videos of Blue Lagoon, one of Malta's top tourism hotspots, completely taken up by deck chairs and by umbrellas. Literally, there's nowhere, nowhere you can stay on the Blue Lagoon without climbing up that isn't occupied by a, by, by, by a, a deck chair or an umbrella. Obviously, those, these aren't free. You have to you have to pay for them. So that's what it's basically saying is you want to stay at the Blue Lagoon, you have to pay this guy, this operator. And many people were rightfully outraged at this. And it's our land as well. If we have a right to sunbathe over here if we want to, and, there, uh, and the people have filed the petition. The petition is called Veronica Marie Barzolo Parni. So shout out to her for taking this, this strong initiative. And to quote her, she's saying, the petition is vital in order to restore the beauty of Comino in its simplest form and not littered with umbrellas and sunbeds. This is public land and not commercial premises, says it all really. 
a very strong, strong statement indeed. If you agree, you can sign the petition by following the URL or going to loveandmalta.com and finding the article about the petition about Camino. And this is the end of the new segment of Love in Daily. We are going to cut to a quick video that will tell you everything about the new planning web. And then we will feature guest Luke Midzi. And we're back on Love and Daily, this time with special guest Luke Midzi. Welcome to Love and Daily. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate being here. <laughs> You're very, very welcome. How are you feeling after the big win? I'm still kind of processing it, to be honest. I mean, uh, it's slowly dawning on me. Uh, I didn't expect it at all on the day, but now the closer uh, my trip to South Africa gets, it, it's starting to hit me a bit more. Uh, but apart from that, I'm fine. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, just to explain, um, Luke Mitzi just won the Red Bull Dance Your Style competition in Busquet over this weekend. Um, and now, as he said, he's heading to South Africa, Johannesburg, if I'm right. Yes. Um, super exciting. There were 16 dancers in total, I think. And you faced off against another popular dancer, Thea Sapiano. Did you expect the other dancers to bring the heat? Uh, some of them I know actually quite Personally, um, I actually teach some of them. Um, some of them are my, are my students, some of them I dance with them uh, at the movement. Um, so I knew some of them were going to be uh, a tough opponent to beat. Uh, there were others who I just knew uh, about, uh, and but I was uh, very pleasantly surprised. Everyone brought their uh, top game. Um, and it was an overall very enjoyable experience to just share the stage with these wonderful dancers. Awesome. How was it to compete against your own students? Did you expect them to win? Like, how was, how was that? Well, uh, it's something that we do at the studio quite a bit just to get prepared for s such events. Um, of course, it's very different to battle them in an actual event, uh, so there's not uh, it's not in the comfort of our studio, that there are people watching, we have to uh, entertain the audience as well, we have to face different directions, we have to still keep that um, mutual respect for each other. Um, I mean, I did expect some of them to really advance. Some of them, I was very pleasantly surprised about their, their progress. Um, and I really enjoyed watching them, to be honest. <laughs> cool, that's really good to hear. Um, so now you're heading to Johannesburg, South Africa. When are you going? So the trip is between 29th of November and 6th December, and it's supposed to be smack in the middle somewhere there, but it's supposed to be like four days of events, workshops with dancers who are people I admire. I watch their videos on social media, and uh, yeah. <laughs> So you'll be representing Malta by yourself. Um, have you started working on your, your routine at all? Um, that's actually the, the 
good part because I don't have to prepare a routine uh, since it's all freestyle. I can prepare combos, but since it's freestyle, I mainly need to train on uh, my fundamentals and my the way I apply certain techniques. So there, there isn't really any choreography, choreography to prepare. So I just need to train freestyling basically. All right. How is that? Does it make it easier? Does it make it more relaxed or more stressful at the same time? For me, it's easier because I prefer freestyle. But for, for sir, if, if it were a choreography, for example, I would be stressing a bit out because it's, it's, it's something that I have to adapt a bit more to. Um, but freestyle is something that I've grown accustomed to. I'm more kind of worried about bringing up my level to the other dancers because these are people who have train they have competed they have won events so i have to just bring up my level to their level basically and these will be people from all over the world i assume yes there's just been uh, your dancer style germany uh, last night uh, surprisingly uh, my mentor's mentor won it so I, i'll be facing him uh, that's that's something i wasn't expecting <laughs> um but yeah, there there will be. I know I know the dancer from Nigeria as well is going to be. We've already like made contact to share some information. Uh, but yes, there will be a lot of dancers from all across the globe. Really, really cool. Um, yeah, good luck already. Thanks. Representing <laughs> Malta, um, people might actually know you already from the movement, which has been um, introduced on Malta's Got Talent with Cheryl Lofreda. Will they be helping you work on your moves? They will definitely be helping me um, because I train at the studio, so I get to um, go over rounds with them. I get to cipher with them. So uh, some of them might be joining me. Uh, they've already starting uh, looking at tickets. So I'm probably taking like a whole co cohort of Maltese people with me. Um, but yes, I mean, I owe, I owe a lot to Cheryl actually because uh, when I've when she opened her school, I was first to jump in and uh, I'm very grateful for all her support, all that she's taught me, I owe, I owe a lot to her. Uh, but even all the other dancers there, they're like family to me, um, even uh, people who are my students in class, but they're not my students, they're more like family. So they will be a very big part of this, yes. Super exciting, super exciting. And as you said, you do train your own students as well. What would you tell people that are in your place or in their place, people learning to dance? What should they keep in mind when they want to perform um, on the global stage? Well, um, first of all, aim for it. Um, especially if you're in Malta, uh, it's, it's not just the local scene that's dancing, basically. So uh, setting that target to try to go abroad, even if it's not a competition, if it's just a workshop, uh, set that target so that's how you improve. But other than that, um, there will be dancers who can help you seek help, assistance, uh, train, have fun with people. That's one of the most important things, especially if it's hip hop. It's uh, grown out of this culture of uh, connection, of battling each other. It's so an all around inclusive community. So um, seek assistance, uh, aim high um, and just go for it and enjoy the process. Awesome. Was it always your plan as well? Did you aim high yourself to go global with your dancing? I always aim for something like that. I didn't know it, w it would be Red Bull. Uh, I had a couple of other events in mind, but it's a pleasant surprise and <laughs> I, I accept it. <laughs> Super cool. I can imagine. All the best. Thank um, you. <laughs> I'm really excited to see you in South Africa representing Thanks. Malta. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching daily, loving daily, and have an evening full of loving.